welcome back. I'm going to be making a digital frequency counter from a my Rio. Now the frequency counter will measure the sort of output you get from a, let's say a quad encoder or some kind of tackle that gives a digital output. Here's a picture of a digital output here from 5 volts to 0. You see it's going high, then low, then high again. And how the program works is that it samples all along here and then when it detects the edge at this point here that's when it uh, takes the time the first time and then it keeps sampling and so on ignores this edge goes over here detects the second one and then it takes the difference between the two and that gives us the time difference or the period of the waveform. If we know the period of the waveform, the frequency is just 1 over that. That's actually in microseconds, so we're measuring in microseconds, so the uh, frequency is going to be in, um, in megahertz, uh, or we can convert. And that's the basic principle. We sample this, each sample is going to be a 1 microsecond apart and so that'll be a one megahertz sampling rate perhaps is a bit of an overkill but there's no um, great reason why we can't use anything a little bit less uh, so let's have a look at the my Rio again okay so here's the my Rio on the bench and if you remember the my Rio it's got two connectors here, A and B, and I'm using the A connector. Notice I'm just using these sort of hobbyist little things that that plug into the pins. Um, you can of course get a proper connector if you want to. Since I've only got two connections I didn't see the point and go into great trouble. So these two inputs which I've um, uh, defined are coming from the function generator here. The function generator I'm going to vary from some low frequency. I've got it set up at 1.44 hertz at the moment and I'm going to go up to maybe 50 to 100 kilohertz and see how this works. But let's look at the diagram and you'll see that here's the project file and I've got a target uh, FPGA program which is uh, me measure digital FPGA dot VI here it is here and I don't know how well you can see it but I'll make a version of this code available you can see it consists of a while loop and it's got a timer in here with a sampling frequency which is set to one microsecond and this timer here is set in microseconds and there's two registers uh, with integers set up at the input and basically um, we check here, here's the input from digital IO1 we can make it any input we like and when that is high versus the previous value which has to be low then we're on the positive going edge of the waveform so this detects the positive going edge and then this triggers the timer so off goes the timer it starts uh, recording and then of course at the next sample it'll no longer be the case, the previous value will be high as well so this will go to false and so it just keeps the last value that value in turn uh, comes down here and uh, you take the difference between the present value and the previous value, it's very simple and that gives us the period of the waveform and uh, you could at that stage do some computations but because we've got an FPGA here, um, 
I don't want to do divisions and things to work out the frequency, so I'm just going to leave it as a period. And then what we'll do is we'll create a host VI, which will read that. And the host VI is over here. Host VI has got a timed loop on it, which is also reading at a megahertz. We can reduce that if we want to. As long as we know that the whatever's in here in the host VI can run uh, in less than one microsecond. If it can't, then you're going to have a problem running this. Probably won't run. So you set your target up in the usual way. Yours is going to be a different name from mine. And uh, the usual code in the host. You, I think this is invoke node. So you can see the pre the, any outputs and inputs uh, on the front panel of the FPGA, you can see them in the host. So here we've got uh, a sampling frequency input and the period. And so we sh should be able to see them through here. And you can see if we go to, um, here we go, add element, we could add another element if we wanted to, and then controls, oops, sampling into what we wanted to, but I don't want to change that, I want to keep it as one megahertz, so we could remotely change that if we needed to. So at the moment I'm only taking the period out, when I take the period out I have to reciprocate it to get the frequency, then I multiply by a million to get the answer in hertz and when I've got the answer I display it here both graphically and numerically so let's switch it on it's been compiled before let's turn on the so this one's the FPGA one which I've compiled before it's not very complicated so it won't take very long to compile uh, if you did compile it. So that's it running and let's run the main one now. There it goes. So it's showing 1.42 Hertz. There's a period of the waveform. I'm not that interested in that because I'm working out the frequency. Let's go down to the this um, frequency generator and it's 1.44 it's not too bad let's wind it up a bit go back over here and watch it so I'm actually changing the dial I'm going to wind it up that's it up at 55.55 Hertz it's actually showing I'm almost spot on 55.55 there on the VI and down here 55.55 Let's change the scale to, let's make it 5 kilohertz now, it's reading 5.55 kilohertz and over here 5.55 kilohertz and there's a dial as well, let's really up it now to the frequency, there's me moving it up to Let's put it on 40 kilohertz on the scale here. Try and get it fairly accurately. Do the uh, fine control. Well, it's 40.16 kilohertz on the function generator and on the display showing around 40 and you'll see on the exact thing it's 40 40 thousand it's showing on the estimated frequency which is 25 microsecond uh, period of the waveform so you can use this sort of thing to measure uh, the speed let's say of a motor uh, coming from uh, a digital tackle it's really handy for that uh, you could extend the idea and have two inputs instead of one here in the FPGA and if you have two inputs then you can if you've got a quad 
detector you can determine the position uh, forward or reverse for a digital servo let's say it's a host of uh, possible applications it is quite a high sampling frequency and it's more than your average um, DSP processor of course can handle uh, but uh, FPGAs eat this sort of thing for breakfast really doesn't pose a problem at all and once again we're using the MyRio here's the actual waveform itself didn't show that that's um, way up doing a little bit of ringing because I've not got any probes on it that's 40 kilohertz around about 40.155 kilohertz and uh, there it is that's how to measure frequency using the MyRio and an FPGA thank you